track of her. They search all around the hotel. Somehow they have her car keys. So they go down to the car. Kaniga was not there, but her cell phone was, at least according to some of the reports that I read, and everything's kind of muddled because these kids were drinking and doing drugs. So after searching for Kanika for about an hour, our friends call. Saturday morning from the car. Teresa freaks out, of course, number one. She didn't know that her daughter was at a hotel party drinking because she's not old enough. And she goes to this hotel at 5 a.m. to help these girls look for her daughter. She was a total mama bear, and I completely respect that. She demanded that the hotel staff look at the surveillance footage to see where Kanika might be, and they refused. They said that they needed a missing persons report first, so Teresa called the Rosemont Police Department, and she was told that she could not file the police report until Kanika was missing more hours. They told her to just wait, because she would show up. Later that morning, after several hours, Teresa was finally allowed to file the report. But it wasn't until 1.15 p.m. that police actually began to search for Kanika. Around 3 or 4, they finally started reviewing the surveillance video. And there are parts of this online, and I have watched some of it. Kanika was seen staggering through the halls of the hotel just clearly impaired. She is bumping into walls. She is running into things. And the last footage of Kanika shows her walking into a kitchen area that was actually non-functional at the time. And they finally locate Kanika at 12.48 a.m. on Sunday, September 10th. 19-year-old Kanika Jenkins was found frozen on the floor of the hotel's walk-in freezer. This freezer was in an area of the hotel that was undergoing construction and was not currently in use. So why was it on? It wasn't until 5 a.m. that day, so they found her at 12.48. 5 a.m. Teresa was allowed to see Kanika after the freezer and her daughter had both been defrosted. Teresa just couldn't believe it. How had her daughter gotten into that freezer? Kanika had hardly been able to stand upright without falling into walls, yet somehow she was able to open the double steel doors of a freezer and walk in and not get back out. Teresa really just couldn't believe it. Um, there was a, um, a prominent activist named Andrew Holmes, and he often spoke out on the behalf of victims of violence, and he said in regards to Kanika that it was just an accident waiting to happen. He claims that the police showed him the surveillance video where he watched Kanika enter the kitchen open the double doors and walk into the freezer, which closed behind her. And he said, did anyone force her down there? Was anyone on the other side of that room when she got there? And the answer is no. But Teresa wanted to see this for herself. She wanted to see the last footage of her daughter actually going into this freezer. So on Thursday, September 15th, police released, released the surveillance videos, none of which, and I've never seen it, showed Kanika actually entering the freezer. In fact, the Crown Plaza Hotel has come out and said they don't have a video camera trained on the doors of this freezer. And this leaves the question, how did Kanika, so impaired, get into that freezer? Rosemont police um, continued their investigation, but on October 20th, 2017, just one month after her death, Kanika's case was closed. Her death was ruled accidental, caused by hypothermia from exposure to the cold in the freezer. In the four-page press release, Rosemont 
speculation floating around social media regarding the death of Miss Jenkins. None of these were supported with facts. While all leads and theories were investigated by our department, what we have reported throughout the investigation, and again today, are the facts. At this time, the Rosemont Public Safety Department has closed the death investigation of Kanika Jenkins and classified this incident as accidental. There's no evidence that indicates any other conclusion. However, there are still a lot of unanswered questions and things that do not quite line up. So, uh, here are a few of those theories that we can kind of debunk together. Teresa Martin fully believes foul play was involved in the death of her daughter. This is pretty driven by the fact that hotel security refused to check the security footage within the first few hours that Kanika was missing. It was kind of as though they were covering up for someone, some organization or something that was hurting her daughter. Adding to this belief are the crime scene photos of Kanika that were released to the public and I saw them and I would include them in this video, but it's pretty graphic to look at. You could Google them, I'm sure you could find them, but YouTube doesn't like stuff like that. So, in these photos, you can clearly see Kanika's body. She's laying in a really unnatural position. Her shirt is pushed up. Her pants are pulled down. She's missing a shoe. When her body was examined, it was found that she had abrasions on her foot and one side of her body. And I, I did this, admittedly. If you zoom in on these pictures, you'll find something black on her left thumbnail. It looks like it might be the other crime that's kind of on the floor around her, but what is it and why is it on her thumbnail? Some people believe that it is the piece of a black garbage bag that she may have been placed in at some point. There is a theory that the footage was altered and that is why the hotel took so long to give it away. Videos popped up all over the internet and I was one of those people watching them on YouTube and everywhere, Facebook. It was people reviewing the security footage that had been released. In these videos, it is suggested that there was someone following Kanika before the camera angle changes. Some people believe Kanika's body language suggests that someone was next to her, guiding her down in the kitchen, while others believe that someone is just ahead of her, out of view of the clips that were released, calling her and guiding her, leading her to this freezer. Now, one of the more outlandish theories in this case state that Kanika was a victim of organ trafficking. In the land of conspiracies, the Crown Plaza Hotel 
she's filled the hallway is straight and she's at the far corner and it looks like someone grabs her from behind and yanks her backwards I totally could see that just the way her body kind of moves is very strange I find it really odd that she was so impaired when her blood alcohol level was not super super high um, she did have some medicines in her system. Let's see. There were no illegal drugs in Kanika's system, but her alcohol level was found to be 0.112. Now, what is it? I don't even know. 0.8 that you're not supposed to be driving. So, okay. But she was going to drive home anyway, so goodness knows what could have happened if she had tried to drive home. She did have topiramate in our system, which is a drug that's used to treat epilepsy and migraines. She was not surpri surprised, prescribed this medication, and it mixed with alcohol can enhance the effects of both, and it can hasten the onset of hypothermia. Now, they said that the reason Kanika was half undressed in this freezer is when you experience hypothermia, there is a point, and lord, I can't remember what the name of it is, where you get really, really hot and potentially start removing your clothes. The thing I find really suspicious about that is why were they not completely removed? She had like a jacket on and the jacket was still on it was the white undershirt that was pulled up to reveal her chest and her pants were only about two or three inches down but they were undone uh, the abrasions on her body and her shoe um, being off and the abrasions on her foot really made me think that she was assaulted I, it's just terrible the pictures are horrible and very hard to look at, but I pretend I'm a crime scene investigator, um, and I had to look at them to see really what I felt happened to this girl, and I don't believe that she just wandered in there and died. Um, that Facebook Live video that I mentioned earlier where her friend was posting there's so much speculation about seeing Kanika in this video, and the girl had on, like, really shiny sunglasses inside at night. And you can see Kanika, or what looks like Kanika, she had very distinctive, super long hair, and this all denim outfit on, so... But you can see her in the reflection of this girl's glasses, but there's some speculation that you can hear her in the background telling people to stop and asking for help, and it is believed that she was assaulted or being assaulted while this girl is posting this video. I don't necessarily know that I believe that's true, because um, I can kind of see her sitting on the bed in the reflection of this girl's sunglasses. I really hope that she was not assaulted. There wasn't any mention of that in the autopsy report, so... I, um, I don't, it's very strange to me that her friend's stories are pretty inconsistent. No one can remember exactly what happened. Everyone says something different. They were texting each other about how much she had to drink. Where did she go? I can't believe you guys lost her. They originally told Teresa she'd gone downstairs with some other people, and then, then they told her they left her alone to go get the cell phone out of one of the hotel rooms, but then the cell phone was in the car. I don't really, 
she was just drunk and wandered into that freezer and couldn't get back out. I don't necessarily, okay, I don't think that they harvested her organs for organ donation for Selena Gomez. Um, that's just ridiculous. 